We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And truly, there is no going back. Hallelujah. Paul declares that we press on yes. to the mark of the higher call. You know there's always higher and higher and yes. higher in yes. the Lord. Greater and greater and greater in the Lord. Yes. God does not want you to stay in the same place. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Are you tired of being in the same place? Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes. Yes. You, know, you know, you can be in the same situation but not have that same mindset. That's right. That's right. You can change the atmosphere where you're at. You can be in the same place, but the atmosphere doesn't have to be the same. That's true. And so I challenge you, wherever you are, wherever you go, all you have to do is just start saying the name of Jesus. Something happens when we start declaring the name of Jesus. Things start to happen. And so again, I want to say thank you to everyone who joined yes, us today. Yes. I see new faces in the congregation this morning. <clears throat> and every Sunday now, it seems like folks are coming back out. We yes. praise God about that. And we encourage anyone who's listening to come on back to church. Yes, yes. You know, uh, uh, we go everywhere else. <laughs> yes. So why can't we come to church on Sunday? Amen. And give God glory and honor. Truly, He is worthy of it. And we need not take any day for granted. Because every day, on this side of the joy, in this, the land of the living, is a good day and worthy for us to praise God. Amen. You know, last week we discussed the healing word. You know, I just been feeling the need and the power in our heart, my heart, about God's Word. Yes, yes. And how His <laughs> Word is just so important in our lives mm -hmm. that we need to know His Word, yes. study His Word, That's right. listen to His Word, keep His Word in front of us all the time. Truly, it is alive. Mm -hmm. And so today, I want to talk to you from about the spoken word of God. You know, when we speak God's word. And so our scripture for today's message comes from Proverbs 18, verse 21. That's Proverbs 18, verse 21. I'm sure you've heard it. Yes. And I would like and hope that it would have a new meaning in your lives after today's message. All right. And so Proverbs 18, verse 21, and it reads, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Here's, here's, here's the key to this. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Yes, yes. Or does anybody love God's yes, word? Yes, come on. Do you, do, do you know that there's a message in that? part of this text all by itself. Right. That those who love it will eat its fruit. Yes. You see, that's because words are very, very powerful. Words are, uh, you know, I used to say it all the time, but the Bible talks about a clanging, clanging sound, and, and that's noise. And noise, when it stops, it goes away. Right. It's gone. But words are not noise. And they're powerful. We talked about last week how when we speak words out, they go. They're, they're eternal. They don't just disappear. Right. And our words have the power to change our lives, our circumstances. Uh, words can hurt. Mm -hmm. And words can bring life. That's right. Words can show love. So words are powerful. Those are our words. Mm -hmm. And so when we speak God's words, it takes on a whole nother power. It, it, it takes on a whole nother dimension yes. because they become supernatural. Well, yes. anybody wants some supernatural power in your life? Amen. Power. Mm -hmm. And so our tongues are an important part of this process. And so we know that our tongues are a small part of our bodies, usually very inconspicuous, 
And some people can talk and you don't even ever see their mouths move. I mean, their tongues move. That's true. But they are powerful. And so unless someone sticks their tongue out or something, you often, you don't even know about power tongue. Yet these tongues have the power to predict the future and control your destiny. That's right. And, and you know, so, so many things I believe have been said here. I've said it on many times. I'm sure you live this like this, uh, where you can speak uh, your day into existence. Uh, you wake up just feeling bad, and instead of rebuking that feeling, and, and you just go along with it, the, the words you use when you talk to yourself become condemn, con words of condensation, condemnation, condemnation, and we just talk uh, about all the negative things, and oftentimes that itself leads to a bad day. And so the tongue has the power of life and death. In the Bible, James talks about it, and he mentions how a ship has this large, giant cruise ship but yet it's steered by this little teeny rudder in comparison to the size of the ship. It moves and directs the ship. And so the, the, the moral is that our tongues, as a metaphor, says simply that the words we use and the things we speak will have an impact on our lives. They will direct us and control us. And so the words you speak can become your reality. That's true. You know you can speak into existence the world you want to live in. And so we have to remember that God's word is inspired by God and it is useful to us. Timothy tells us that God gives us his word to teach us what is true and to make us realize in our lives if we're doing things that are wrong. It corrects us when we are wrong. It teaches us to do right. And so God's word becomes prophetic, right. and it is foretelling, or it can predict uh, what and where and how our lives are going to be. Amen. Do you, do, you, do, you, do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Amen. That the words we speak are so very important, mm -hmm. and we take words for granted. I mean, we all know somebody that just feel like hearing them go talking, just like feel like, shut up. Uh, you know, we all know somebody that just goes on and on and just talks and talks. And then you might hear somebody that, that doesn't say much, but when they do say something, it's powerful right. and it's meaning. Mm -hmm. Somebody say wisdom. wisdom. And so God's word, when spoken, it is prophetic because it speaks usually of future events. Right. The promises of God, when combined with your faith, and spoken become self-fulfilling. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible, when we say healed by his stripes, mm -hmm. with faith we can believe and we can see how that takes on the shape of what it is that we are speaking. Mm -hmm. We see in Genesis 1, verse 3, that God spoke That's right. a prophetic word. God said, let it be light, and there was light. And so we have God's DNA. We have that same power. We have the same ability to call things that be not as though they were. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was on my journey, there's certain scriptures that when I heard them, they really had an impact in my life. I was like, wait a minute. What does that mean? Call things that be not as though they were. Boy, what, what does that mean? That means that you can speak something into existence that doesn't exist right now. Right. That's a powerful, that is a powerful gift from God that we have to all believers. Are any believers that are Amen. Amen. That we have the ability to speak into existence things that are in the spiritual realm and have them manifest in the natural realm. He has given us this ability. And so in faith we can call things that be not as though they were. Mm -hmm. And so when you speak a word, be it your own, or the word of God, they are like seeds. That's right. Planted in your spiritual and subconscious mind. We spoke briefly about the subconscious mind. That you can speak negative things, 
about your day, about yourself. You hear about people, uh, 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 doc, you know what I'm talking about. The voice we use when we talk to ourselves can be very hard. Someone who is depressed usually has a very, uh, oftentimes the voice they use to, about themselves can be very destructive. And, 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 and so the voice we use subconsciously about ourselves yeah. can be harmful and we have to be careful Amen. how we talk to ourselves. Yes, yes. Somebody needs to hear that. You know, sometimes I, I have to remember that myself. That's right. You know, I used to, I used to uh, do a didactical session and uh, part of it, a didactical session is uh, when you stand before a group of people. It's almost like a lecture, but there is some dialogue in between, and there's a conversation, and usually there's a topic. And so oftentimes, for me, I used to challenge everyone when we were talking about the voice you use to talk to yourself. You ask yourself, when's the last time you looked in the mirror and said, man, you look good, boy, boy, you look good. Somebody. Is that something we do, or do you do it often? Now, there are some folks that look in the mirror, and when they look in the mirror, they start, man, they go all out. But for most of us, that's not something we usually do. When we look in the mirror, we start saying, oh, you need to do this, and then this is not right. And so part of the things that I would challenge would be when you look in the mirror, to say something nice about Speak good, positive, yes. self, self uh, encouraging words to yourself about yourself. Amen. Even if you don't feel them, even if you don't believe it, it starts by you doing it. And so, words, and that's because whether or not you feel it at the time, remember, words are not noise, they're a lie. And the more you start saying it, the more you start using these kind of words, they do have an effect. Uh, an effect on you, on your subconscious mind. Yeah. They are actually received and begin to be treated as true, and then they can take on a life of their own. Mm -hmm. They take root and grow. The Bible says when we speak words, they take root and grow, and they produce the fruit of the same time. That's what the Bible says. That's, that's how the Bible says what I just said. Yeah. That it takes on, it takes root. And it grows and it produces the fruit mm -hmm. of the same God. Yeah. So if you look in the mirror and you say, man, oh, I'm like you all that in a bag of chips. And you start saying it often enough, long enough, you start seeing that you got a little pep in your step now. And, and then when you get dressed, you want to put on something a little nicer this time. For no reason, just because I'm all that. And so it's good for us to do that. Yeah. And at the same time, it's also good for us to do that with God's word. And so the Bible also says it in another way. It says that you will reap what you sow. Yes. And so if you speak positive words, your life will move in that direction. Mm -hmm. If you speak negative, self-defeating words, your life will move in that direction. And so again, the text reminds us that the power of life and death is in, it says the tongue because the Bible talks about things in a, 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 a way literally where we can see and, and kind of understand it. So it says life and death is in the power of the tongue. There's power in your words. Yes. What you say in the midst of your difficulties will determine how long you stay in those situations. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. What you say in the midst of the difficulties will determine how long you stay in those situations. When you start saying positive, good things about your situation, it usually brings about that kind of change in whatever it is that you're going through. Do you know things don't have to change around you, but you can change how you see them. That's or right. how you're going to act or how you're going to respond in the situation that you're in. Right. That's where the scripture, the peace that surpasses all understanding mm -hmm. is generated Amen. from. Amen. Because that peace doesn't change nothing about where you are or what's going on mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It changes the way you feel. Yeah. It changes the way you see. Mm -hmm. It reminds you and, and, and emphasizes to you that God is greater than whatever it is you're going through. That's right. And that when you give it to God, mm -hmm. what are you worrying for? Mm -hmm. That if you truly believe that God is good, does anybody believe God is yes. good? Yes. Well, y'all don't believe God is good. Do you believe God is good? Yes. Then whatever the situation is, no matter what you're going through, God is going to use it to bring about his good will in your life. Amen. Sylvia spoke about it and said, sang about it. They sang about it. Are you going back? Mm -hmm. We're going to press forward. God is constantly doing a new thing in our life. As much as we hate to believe it, but he even uses the difficult things, the hard times in our life to mold us and shape us into that product, that, that final Amen. creation that he wants us to be. Amen. And so the power of life and death are in, in our work, our tongue. Yes. And so that's why you must say what the word says about yes. whatever your situation is. Yes. You know, there's so many um, scriptures, as I, I said, that when I read them, I scratched my head. Have you ever scratch your head and ask yourself, why does the Bible say we walk by faith and not by faith? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, Lord? I walk by faith and not by sight. What do you want me to do? Close my eyes? Yes. That's exactly what God wants you to do. Close your eyes and trust that I'm going to guide you through this circumstance and situation. Don't look at the, the situation from what you see. That's right. It's a hard lesson. You know, I, I walked in the hospital room uh, to see a dear friend of mine, Steve, laying there on a respirator. I remember growing up, he's older than me. He was a legend in the town. I, I, I idolized him. Bigger than life. And there I'm looking at him. And the first thing in my mind I'm thinking is, is, is what, what, what's wrong? What's wrong, God? What, what's happening? What, what, what's going on? And, and so God says, shut your eyes. Don't look at what you see. Trust me. My, your, your prayers have not fallen on deaf ears. God's word will never return void, even if what we're praying is not answered in the way that we want it to be answered. Amen, amen. And so, it's a, 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 it's a hard thing. Mm -hmm. But it's something that we as Christians, we must understand that no matter what we're going through, that we are to walk by faith and not by sin. Amen. Amen. That's right. And so, mm -hmm. Ephesians 6 says this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, mm -hmm. against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of yes. this world, against yes. spiritual wickedness. Mm -hmm. yes. It says that we are to put on the armor of God, oh, yes. which is the sword of the word, yes. sword of the spirit, yes. which is the word of God. Ah, hallelujah. And so no matter what the situation is, no matter what we walk into, no matter where we're going, we have to start speaking God's word. That's right. And so when I walked in the hospital room, I started speaking God's word. Lord, you are greater than what I see here in the natural realm. Lord, you sit high, but I know you look low. Lord, you are in control uh, that these machines and these doctors are all instruments in your hands. Lord, I, I give Steve to you right now, Lord, because as much as we love him, you love him more. And no matter what is going to happen, Lord, we know that the end result is going to be uh, better than, than what we see here now. Yeah. And so I started saying God is our refuge and strength, a very present time in trouble. I said, therefore, I will not fear, for you are with me, O oh God. Yes, yes, that's right. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but a, a sound mind. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I shall fear no evil. His rod and his staff shall comfort me. And so I don't know what it is you may be going through. I guess I'm saying these things because I'm going through something right now. But I don't know what you may be going through, but whatever it is, you have the power to go on up all things. The Bible talks about the sword of the Spirit of the Word. That's an offensive uh, weapon. It's something that we can use to fight the good fight of faith. Yes, and when yes. we start declaring God's word, there's power that goes out. And so I want to, to just say I am blessed in the city. Yes. Blessed in the country. Yes. Blessed when I go in and when I come out. Blessed. I declare that everything I put my hands on yes. will prosper and succeed. Yes. My children will be blessed. Oh, there's somebody out there that wants to join in with me. Yes. My household will be blessed. blessed. My wife will be blessed. Yes. My child, my my job will be blessed. Yes, God. Hallelujah. And start declaring the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Above every name, yes. every situation, yes. every circumstance. Yes. I don't care what it is going on in your life. I don't care what you may be facing right now. Mm. It has a name. That's right. And we have a name that is greater than any other name, and that is the name of Jesus. Because the name of Jesus is a strong name. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And I don't know about you, but I've been running to that name lately. Yes, God. Because things have not been looking right when I see them in the natural That's right. That's right. And the Lord's been saying, close your eyes and walk by faith. Trust that I am greater than anything going on in your life right now. Trust that I can, I didn't bring you this far to leave you yes. now. Trust me that I will take you to the other side. Yes, God. And so look to the hills from where your help comes from. Yes, Truly the help comes from the Lord. Yes. Remember that you can do all things through Christ that gives you strength. Yes, yes. And so Isaiah says, and I'm closing out this message now. Uh, behold, I will do a new thing. That's yes. right. Now it shall spring forth. Yes. Shall you not know it? Mm. Jesus. Come I will on. even make a road in the wilderness. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Lord. And rivers in the desert. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. All things are possible for those that believe in God. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. For he is truly not a man that he should lie, or the son of man that he has to Yes, be. yes. And so I'm going to trust in him. Jesus. I know that he is my way maker. Yes, he is. I know that he is the lion of Judah. Yeah, God. Even though he was the lamb that was slain, he rose as the lion of Judah. Hallelujah, Jesus. He is Jehovah Jireh yes, he is. and my provider. Yes, he is. Some trust in chariots and horses. Yeah. yeah but but we will remember the name oh, of the Lord. Lord. Yes, God. Hallelujah. For he is truly a strong tower. Jesus. Let us pray. Jesus. Eternal Father, yes. we worship you. We pray. Bless your name, Father. Lord God, we thank mm. you to remind us about the power we Hallelujah. have when we start speaking your yeah. word over yeah. our lives, over yeah. our circumstances. Lord, I thank God that not everybody here is in the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that there are some folks that can worship you now and thank you because everything is good. And praise your holy name. But for all those other folks, Lord, that are wrestling with a situation in their life, Lord, let them know that you are a strong tower that the righteous can run to. Remind them that there is no circumstance that you can't overcome, Lord God. Remind them that they are that you are a way maker when it seems like there are no other ways. Remind them to look to the hills from where their help comes from, for it truly comes from you. Remind them to speak the name of Jesus over whatever their circumstance is. Tell them to walk by faith Jesus, and Jesus. not by sight. Lord, we promise yes, that we will give you all the honor and glory. For you alone are truly worthy of 
of such grief. Oh, I challenge you right now, right where you are. Just start praising God and worshiping Him. Just start praying to the Lord right now. Just start saying the name of Jesus right where you are. Lord, you are strong now, Lord. I'm running to you right now, Lord. Uh, I thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing in my life, Lord. I thank you for the challenges that I've been going through, Lord, because I, I know you're using them to bring about your goodwill in my life, that you're strengthening me, oh God, that, that you're showing me a new way, a new thing, oh God, you're teaching me through endurance how to, to, to be able to worship you in spite of what's going on. Just start worshiping the Lord right where you are. Just start talking to him, praising his name because he's good and he's worthy to be praised. In the name of Jesus, start worshiping him right where you are. Hallelujah. Lord, I just feel that we just need to just stand and just pray, and just especially for those that are going through, those that are on their bed of affliction, that we stand in the gap in the name of Jesus. I know that everybody knows somebody that is going through in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just stand in the gap because that's what God has called us to do as intercessors, to stand in the gap for those that cannot say Jesus, for those that are on the bed of affliction, for those that are in need in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we just come before you. We glorify. Let me just hear you lift up your voice as we stand within a mighty, powerful position of prayer, Almighty oh God, in the name of Jesus in every corner of this church, Lord God. There's a circle, Lord God, of protection, Almighty oh God, in every part of this congregation, Lord God, that we come together united in prayer, Almighty oh God, praying for prayers that bring about a change in the situations that are going on. Jesus. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus. 